Hey ladies and gentlemen, it is Steve here from CG Geek, and welcome to another workstation build video. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how well Threadripper handles 3D tasks like Blender. And, uh, hint, I think it's going to be pretty good. So Threadripper was just released this year, and some of the exciting things that it has is, first of all, 16 cores and 32 threads, which makes it absolutely amazing for rendering and multitasking. And then it also has 64 PCIe Express lanes, meaning you can run up to four GPUs on your system, and two of them being 16 times speeds. So that's pretty much incredible for 3D rendering. You can have all the GPU power you want in your system and uh, power it all with Threadripper. On top of that, it supports quad channel memory and allows up to eight different DIMM slots. So that is amazing too for 3D tasks and rendering and multitasking as well. And it's a great overclocker. A lot of people can overclock them to four gigahertz with no problems. Just keep in mind, you probably want a liquid cooled AIO because it can get a little toasty at those uh, overclock temperatures. So Threadripper is the heart of our workstation now, but we need a good mother board to go along with it and I have chosen the ASRock X399 Tashi board. So ASRock has made some really great motherboards and the Tashi line is one of my favorite. I love the way it looks, it has the cool gears, plus it gives you everything you need in a motherboard. It provides great power delivery for great overclocking abilities. It includes three M.2 slots so you could technically run three NVMe drives in RAID on Threadripper and get just incredible speeds for your hard drives. It also has all the I.O. ports you'd want with plenty of USB 3 and fast Ethernet and it comes with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Plus for you RGB lovers there is full support for that as well so you can get as smexy looking as you want. Woo! And then just like Ryzen, of course Threadripper likes fast RAM. So I reached out to Ballistic and I got 64 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM. This stuff is extremely fast and extremely easy to use on Ryzen. I was able to plug it in and just choose the XME XMP profile and overclock like that. I'm running 3200 megahertz and getting tasks done extremely fast. So a huge shout out to Ballistic for sending this and I can't recommend it more. It's a very high quality RAM and like I said it works amazing with Ryzen and Threadripper and you can hit those 3200 megahertz speeds no problem. But enough talk, let's assemble this beast and see what kind of speeds we get. So with Threadripper overclocked now to 3.9 gigahertz, I wanted to run a few benchmarks and first see how it compared to Ryzen 7. So starting with some Blender benchmarks around the BMW benchmark scene, and the BMW scored 431 on our Ryzen 7 chip, and it scored 219 on Threadripper. So as you can see, about twice as fast with Threadripper, just ripping through the scenes and rendering extremely fast. Same story with the classroom scene when Ryzen 7 took 15 minutes and 48 seconds, and Threadripper did it in 8 minutes and 44 seconds. So amazing render speeds, and if you haven't heard yet, Blender Cycles now supports CPU rendering and GPU rendering. So rendering with 32 threads plus up to 4 GPUs in Ryzen Threadripper and the X399 Tashi, you'll get some of the fastest render times you'll ever see on a single CPU setup. 
So something else I was curious about is what about the power draw? How much more energy efficient is Ryzen 7 over Threadripper? Well, so I ran some tests uh, coming out of my wall, what my total system draw was rendering with Ryzen 7 and rendering on Threadripper. And when I was rendering with Ryzen 7, I was drawing 297 watts from the wall. And now with Threadripper, while I'm rendering, it's 450 watts. So about 150 watts more with Threadripper and this motherboard setup versus the Ryzen 7 setup. And no CPU benchmark showdown is complete without Cinebench R15. So I ran that on Ryzen 7 and I scored a 1722. And then I ran it on my overclocked Threadripper. Like I said, both of these are at 3.9 gigahertz and Threadripper came in at 3,311, which is pretty fast. Compare that to my old build from a few years ago, which was the dual Xeons running at about three gigahertz and those only came in at 2320. So as you can see, the newer hardware with faster RAM is totally smashing the previous Xeon build I did, even though they're both 32 threads, Threadripper is quite a bit faster, especially when it comes to single core tasks as well, as that 3.9 gigahertz swoops in to save the day. And last but not least, when we're talking benchmarks, I wanted to see if Threadripper would actually speed up other processes like exporting video, for example, out of Adobe Premiere. So I ran the benchmark on my Ryzen 7 build and my video export came out at eight minutes and eight seconds, again at 3.9 gigahertz. And then the same thing with Threadripper, ran the same export file and it did it in five minutes and 48 seconds. So quite a bit faster. And I was curious if the Ryzen 7 was bottlenecking my previous system. So I did look at the task manager while I was exporting that video. And as you can see, it was actually, it was hitting the limits and uh, pretty much using 100% of the CPU, even though there's eight cores and it was slowing down. Same with the RAM. I was running 32 gigabytes of RAM on my Ryzen 7 system and I was hitting the limit to that as well. Then running the benchmark on Threadripper, I could see that Premiere was taking advantage of some of those extra cores and rendering faster. And the same thing with the RAM, Premiere was using more of the memory to render the scene faster. And that's how I got faster results. And there was actually still some CPU cores left alone after that, that I could have been doing other tasks at the same time and getting faster speeds. So something else I was interested in is does the 16 times PCIe Express lane in SLI make a difference when it comes to rendering? And in my tests, it was no. At 1080p and rendering, it makes absolutely no difference. But I have heard that at 4K and up displays, it can make a difference to run your GPUs at 16 times versus eight times. And that's an advantage that Threadripper gives you. Um, I can't really benchmark this myself as I don't have 4K displays, but uh, it's good to know. And it also kind of future proofs you. So that future proof means that if in the future there's a GPU that will take advantage of the 16 times PCIe Express lanes, or like for example, 4K monitors, you might get one in the future and then you might be finding you need those 16 times speeds at SLI. So that's pretty crazy, but um, yeah, just good to know. So pretty much Threadripper makes the most sense in my opinion, if you're looking to get a new workstation build at the price of a thousand bucks or less, you can usually find them on sale now. Um, it's pretty much unbeatable. So if you're interested in any of the hardware I'm running, I have links available in the description for you to check out. Um, also, if you're looking to purchase one of these parts, please use one of the links I have there as I will make a little bit off of the purchase and it will help keep this channel running. But that will do it. Um, I'd like to quick thank Ballistic and Azrock for sending me these components that have made the system as amazing as it is. And I can safely say after using these components for a few weeks now that they work very well. I'm a big fan of the Azrock Tashi boards. They're always coming out with quick BIOS updates and keeping things compatible and running fast. Probably one of the fastest manufacturers actually to come out with BIOS updates for Ryzen 7. So that will do it guys. I hope you enjoyed this workstation build video. Let me know if you like more of them with a like. Let me know if you hated it with a dislike. Let me know what you thought with a comment. Uh, let me know what you didn't think without a comment. <laughs> and that's gonna do it for me. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.